Hey everybody, this is Sharon Gable. We're going to talk about dip and strike today. Dip and strike are usually concepts that give some beginning geology students a little bit of trouble because it has to do with geometry. A lot of times when we go out in the field and look at rocks, the rocks are not flat lying like the ones in the background here from Dinosaur Provincial Park in Alberta, Canada. Instead, they're tilted. And a good example of that can be found in Colorado here at Garden of the Gods, just outside Colorado Springs. And what you're looking at here are sometimes known as flat irons. It's exposed sedimentary rock and the sedimentary rock layers are tilted so that they're almost vertical. So the surface we're looking at here is actually the bedding plane or top of a sedimentary rock layer. And if we hike up a little bit closer, we can take a look at uh, a few of those layers a little bit closer up. You can see here the layering in the rock is not horizontal. Those layers have been tilted, so they're standing up just about vertical. Just as a note, these are boulders that fell down from up above. So dip and strike are used to describe the orientation of rocks in space. And it's very important when geologists are trying to figure out what kind of underlying rock structures are present. Can identify things like folds. When we see outcroppings of rock, and the rocks are tilted. Go around an area and map out the way the rocks are tilted, or in other words, they're dip and strike. We can figure out if there's an anticline or a syncline or some other type of interesting geologic structure down in the subsurface. Now we don't have any bedrock exposed around Houston, Texas, so I went out in the backyard and I have an assistant who's going to help me demonstrate the dip and strike of a rock layer. We're going to use a board to represent the rock layer. It's not horizontal, it's tilted. And my assistant, Eric, is going underneath this layer of rock. I wanna show you the compass that a geologist would use to measure dip and strike. This one's a simple Silva compass. A lot of geologists in the US use a fancier Brunton compass. Another of my assistants, that's Rosie. So let's open this up and see what it looks like. Here's the way you'd hold the compass if you're going to take a bearing to figure out what direction you're looking at. Um, let's face the compass there. Notice when I move the compass to have it point in different directions that needle, the compass needle, it always wants to point toward magnetic north. Okay, so now I'm facing magnetic north and my board. I'm going to turn to my right, and if I turn 90 degrees to my right, I should be facing due east, right? That's due east, my back fence. Due north, over there at that big philodendron. How do I know I'm facing east? It still says north. Well, the face of the compass turns like a little dial. And you have to make that red arrow inside the compass face line up on either side or just below the red end of the compass needle. Okay, when you get it all lined up, then you read off the direction you're facing uh, up there at the top where the little white arrow is. So I'm facing just about due east when I turn 90 degrees to my right from where I was looking at the board. That's how we'd measure a direction, but how do we measure things like the dip angle? That's how much the board is tilted with respect to horizontal. Inside the compass face, there's a clinometer. It's this little gauge down in here. Rosie's gonna help me set this up to measure the dip angle. So we've carefully placed the compass on its side along the steepest slope of the board and we can read off the dip angle, it's about 20 degrees. What about the dip direction? That's the direction a marble will roll or a compass will slide when you let it go along the sloping rock. Looking back to what Eric showed us earlier, 
the board is sloping or tilted or we could say dipping from left to right and that's toward the back fence. So here's our dipping rock. It's dipping toward the back fence. I put a piece of paper on it so we could write down what we've observed. Remember the big philodendron is to the north and the back fence is to the east. So on the paper, I'm going to draw a line that points in the direction the compass rolled. And remember, that's called our dip direction. Let me zoom out so you can see what I'm writing. And the rock's dipping to the east. So next we're going to show the strike. The strike is the direction the rock extends laterally, perpendicular to dip. So we draw the line across the top, making kind of like a capital T out of it. And that's our strike direction. The strike and the dip are always at a right angle, so that's 90 degrees in there. So the rock is striking north-south, right? The garage was to the north, so if we have a rock that's dipping to the east, the strike is going to be at 90 degrees or north-south. So let's put this information on a map. Here's our map and we have the north arrow on the map and here's our location where we had our rock that was dipping to the east at 20 degrees and striking north-south. So we're gonna use our strike and dip symbol to represent that information on the map. So first we're going to indicate our dip direction which is to the east. We put a little line there that points due east on the map, right? If north is to the top of the page, then east is 90 degrees around to the right. We have to have our line indicating dip pointing in the direction of east because we measured an eastward dip on our sloping rock. And then we're going to put the strike on our strike and dip symbol going across the top like we showed a second ago the rock striking north-south, and finally we indicate the dip angle by simply writing it next to the strike and dip symbol. So I hope this video helped explain what strike and dip are, how to measure it, and how to represent the dip and strike of a rock on a geologic map.